Greg Hunter. So, Jamal, the, the perception used to be that K-State's offense was a lot different than everybody in the Big 12. Um, is that still true? I mean, teams are, are more power-based than they used to be in this league. Yeah, probably probably not as, as much of a one-off as it, as it was in the past. Uh, they still do some things that challenge you and may be different than what you see um, on a week-in, week-out basis. I think everybody has probably a wrinkle or two that they do um, that creates problems and forces you to prepare and and really be well-rounded in terms of, of schematically being sound. And so um, that's the challenge every week. This week is no different. And so we're back at work. <clears throat> Ryan Pritt. Hey, Coach. You know, looking at their numbers, they only have two turnovers in five games this year, only one interception, which is kind of surprising considering how, how much time a true freshman's played over there. So – when you look at film, is, is it that they've protected him a little bit with some safe play calls? Is it just that he's making really good decisions for a young kid? And how big of a challenge is it for you guys to try to get one off of them? Yeah, I think he, he does a good job. I, I don't want to take anything away from the kid. I think he he's sharp enough. The coaches have done a good job with him where he knows to go with the football, probably pre-snap, so before the ball snap, which means he's IDing uh, what defenses are doing to him, and he knows – where his outlets are, where his help is, and, and uh, he's able to use it. You know, I think the running back has been somewhat of a, a blanket for him in a sense, and to where if, if there isn't anything vertically, he can dump the ball down to a back. And obviously that kid showed that he's able to be electric with the football in his hands. And so I think any quarterback wants, you know, one, a tight end that can make things happen down the middle of the field, and two, a running back that can catch it out of the backfield and, and really hurt you um, defensively. And he has both of those things. Um, and uses them and uses them well, you know, to his credit. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Jamal, their um, their red zone numbers are really impressive, mm -hmm. and the game changes when you get down there in secondary, especially you have mm -hmm. space on your side. But they're still even them. They pass the ball well in there, and they make some things happen. What have you seen from them once they get down and close to the goal line? Yeah, I mean, just like everyone else, man, they use their tight ends down in the red zone, and they use them. Um, in a really solid fashion. You know, it's not fluff. They're not uh, dummy routes, um, but rather, you know, guys that can be targeted. Um, they're both athletic, um, shown the ability to go up and make the contested catches. And I think anytime you have that weapon down in the red zone, it creates problems. The other, the other thing is that um, they're so balanced in terms of their attack that um, there are times where, you know, obviously if, you, if you're barreled in on, on the run game, you can sort of overlook what's going on pass-wise, which is an issue. And if you're too passive, uh, they run the ball right up right up the alley on you. And so, um, again, down there is kind of, you know, having one extreme or another and really being solid at it and uh, and sound. And, and I think the teams that they've been able to be effective against, um, if you watch film, um, literally they're forcing them to bust coverages, forcing them to misfit things. And so not necessarily do they have to make the contested catches at times. Sometimes guys are just running free. Um, and so we, we've got to treat their pass game almost like you would treat an option run game. Um, when you practice without a ball, you know, and make sure that everybody's accounted for and um, and make sure that people have their eyes in the right spots, especially down there. Cody? So, Jamal, what you just said was kind of what um, Coach Leslie was saying. We, we asked him about uh, kind of containing Deuce Vaughn, and right. he kind of said what you just said, which is making sure the guys are looking in the right spots and, not, and you know, knowing where he is. Um, right. A player like that, does that just make – does that just make it even more important that, that your players know what's going on and they know what to expect so they're not caught off guard? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think play, play to play, we want to account for all 11, and I think that's fair um, to say. Um, obviously, with the caliber of player that, that he happens to be, and really everybody on their team, I mean, in terms of their skill athletes, have to be accounted for. Um, you look at, you know, even their receivers, who, you know, the production may be down a little bit from last year, but – um, they obviously have shown the ability to make the big play and, and, and really hurt you offensively. Um, and so, again, not, not, not to hold anything or, or really take away from any player on their team, but every week we come out, we want to make sure we account for wherever anyone is that can, that can possibly help us or hurt us, I should say, down the field or in the run game. And, and again, this week, no different. Okay, John? You know, uh, you're almost thinking backwards here because as a pass defense, you want them to check down on the running back. Right. But with these guys, 
he's their most explosive player, at least mm-hmm. statistically. Right. It's almost backwards in the way you go about this, right? Yeah, you, you would think so. You yeah. always want to you always want to force the shortest throw on the field. I think as a as a defensive backs guy, that's that's going to be our goal is to always force the shortest throw on the field and then force guys to tackle and tackle in space. Um, we obviously know the issues that he presents. The, the problem there is that a lot of his plays aren't just checkdowns. They do send them vertically as well. And so you've got to be able to, again, do things within your, your coverages to make sure that, one, there aren't mismatches um, in terms of personnel, and then, two, that you're able to leverage leverage things correctly. I think that's huge in this game and where you're wanting to cup the ball to keep the ball in a certain space, and your players have to know where their help is and where their help isn't in order to alleviate that. You know, if you're going to line up against this running back and, and cover 53 yards worth of field left to right, good luck, right? But if you know where your help is and you're able to play to that, um, that can cut the 53 yards into 20 yards of space that maybe you have to cover. And so that, that helps your job in itself. And those are the types of things as coaches that we've got to be able to do for our players to, to minimize the ability for the explosive play. I'm assuming that's a multiple player deal too. It's not just one guy that's going to, you got to use multiple guys with him. Absolutely. And, and any, any guy that's an elite player, uh, at any position, uh, you like to think that they probably garner a little bit more attention than, than maybe an average or subpar um, player, and they, they have a few. And so it's it's all about picking your poison as to where you want to focus your your energy and really your focus um, on a play-to-play basis. Last thing here, uh, did, did defending Puka help a little bit there? You guys did a pretty good job of bottling up Puka. Yeah. I don't know skill-wise how they compare, but um, was that helpful at all? Yeah, I mean – Anytime you play well against Puka, I think you feel you feel good about your chances against anything else that you would see throughout the season. Um, this kid is again dynamic, probably dynamic in even a different way, um, but pr- proposes the same issues. Right, can catch the ball out of the backfield, can make you miss in a phone booth, and, and those things are are scary for defenses and, and obviously defensive coaches. But uh, we trust and believe in our guys, and, and we know they're up for the challenge and they're going to compete. And that, at the end of the day, that's the point of emphasis is to compete, and that's what that's what we'll do. Greg Hunter. So Jamal, just the, your, your overall feeling on, on the defensive back play this year, you haven't rotated a whole lot. The, right. What are your backups? You Not as much faith in them as the starters? Just yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, just, you know, when as a coach, you, you want to, you almost want to evaluate how things are going early. And, uh, you know, if you see some things that you don't like, if you see some things that maybe, um, you know, could be a mismatch even in our light, um, you make those changes. But if it's not broken, um, we're not going to fix it. I thought for the most part throughout the season, we've matched wells, matched routes correctly and, and well. Um, I thought that Dre Miller and, and, and obviously number 11, Nick Troy, has competed at, at corner on the edges. And uh, both of our safeties have shown the ability to make plays throughout the season. Um, and so obviously with that, you know, we're not going to make, make changes unnecessar- un- unnecessarily. Now, that's not to say that the guys behind them aren't, aren't good enough to win with. but. Um, we feel comfortable with that group of guys, and, and we, we've given our chances and ourselves chances in just about every every single game, having playing that group, and so we'll, we'll stick with it. Go ahead, Mike. You want to finish this up? Yeah, uh, that, that kind of actually steps on what I was going to ask a little bit, but I guess just to, to get something out of this, are you, are you flipping sides of the field, or are you just matching up Fortune and and Miller with matchups that you like, or where they feel more comfortable, or what the game yeah. plan calls for? We change it up by game. For the most part, they've been left and right. Um, but if we see a matchup that we like better, which doesn't happen very often, we may switch them um, and track a receiver or two. But for the most part, they play left and right. They know um, that, that in any situation, they may have to go to the opposite side of the field. And, and what you don't want to do is pigeonhole yourself into having a guy only play one side. Because if the situation ever presents itself in which he's got to switch, there's, there's an issue there. And so both are well-versed in, in both sides of the field. and, and um, we'll continue to play it just that way.